With 3D printing becoming more and more popular, we have all types of options for filament these days compared to even just a couple of years ago. But in my opinion, the holy grail is metal printing. And while that's available for industrial use at a high cost, for us consumer guys, it's not really a reality. I mean, we do have a couple filament types like color fabs, bronze fill, as well as protopastas, stainless steel filament, and there's many other companies that are putting stuff like this out as well as wood filaments and carbon fiber filaments. But there's a new kid on the block that is doing something a little bit different, and that's Virtual Foundry. They boast a 90% plus metal filament, and they offer it in brass, bronze, and I believe copper. Not only that, but they do offer um, a process in which you center it, which is basically heating it up and melting away that other 10% of plastic or, or binding or epoxy, whatever it is, and they're leaving you with a 100% metal print. Now, thanks to Brad over Virtual Foundry, he sent me a sample of their things. Thanks, Brad for me to do a review on it and I'm super excited to do it because this is right up my alley if you guys are subscribers and know my channel I do uh, lost PLA and lost wax castings off of my 3d printer so this is exactly what I would do and would make my process and my videos a whole lot easier so let's get started all right here's the box that i received from brad over virtual foundries i haven't opened it yet i don't want you guys to see exactly what i got uh so let's get this thing unboxed oh wow gee gee whiz so this is their magic and you can see it their magic black powder this has to do with centering it after you've printed it looks like we got a nice instruction manual that's very neat and very cool that they uh, provide that little sample of the copper filament pretty cool another sample of the copper filament i'm stoked that they included these and then we have a roll of their bronze their bronze filament, 89 percent bronze so that's pretty cool also. And then what do we got here? A card and some little pieces of metal. Not sure what that is, but I have a forge so I can melt it down. Anyways, pretty cool. Amazed at the size of this spool to be completely honest. It's 0.75 kilograms and uh, looks like it's sealed really well and everything like that hefty duty spool to be to be honest so let's get this set up so let's go over the printing instructions here at least the print settings real quick they say temperature uh, 205 to 250 degrees celsius that's for the print head um, print bed is going to be 50 c they say optional print speed is they, they have this is per minute, 1800 millimeters per minute, which is 30 per second, which is pretty typical of what I print unless I'm printing really fast uh, with my wax filament. It needs a slow print speed. So nothing different there. Uh, layer height, they say to make sure you don't have a, it too close to the bed because it may jam or clog the nozzle. And then the nozzle, they say 0.5 millimeter, although all their test has been with 0.4. Now, I knew this going into it, and I thought about ordering a 0.5 millimeter nozzle specifically for this. I have 0.4s, um, so, but I have a bunch of them, so if we get clogs, it uh, shouldn't be an issue. We'll just swap them out. And then the rest uh, of these instructions has sanding, polishing, and then the centering process to make it 100% metal. We'll wait on that. I'd rather get this thing printing, so let's get to it. So one of the first thing I noticed, I figured I'd start out with the copper sample, which I have two of, but just in unpacking it, I noticed that the thing looks like it's very brittle and has snapped in a couple places, um, which obviously if you want to print a continuous print is not going to be ideal. So, you know, we'll see this could have happened during shipping, but you can see there's other breaks in this filament right, right there. Um, and obviously, like I said, if it happened during, during shipping, that's not necessarily Virtual Foundry's fault, but, and it may just be how this filament kind of is. It, it's 90% metal powder, so it's going to be very brittle. That's to be understood. But, um, 
hopefully that's not the case with the large bronze uh, roll. If you wanted to print something very large, that could be definitely be a big issue. So we'll see how this goes. Um, you know, bending it out of this roll and getting it to go down into the hot end is going to be tricky and not snapping it. And we'll see how it prints as well. But I thought I'd mention that. We'll see how it goes with the other sample and the large roll of the bronze. Maybe this was just a fluke. So we'll see. Okay, now it is about 24 hours later from when I last left you guys. And as you know, I started with the copper. There were some breaks in it. I started to print out the dragon egg model that I casted a while ago, and this is what I was basically left with. A looks like a bowl. Looks like a little uh, clay bowl. Basically what was happening is there's no reel for, for the copper. It's just a sample, so I was just kind of holding it or leaning it up against stuff to feed it in there and it would break. Uh, this stuff is just super, super brittle. I mean, you just bend it and it breaks. And that's kind of the whole story here. So I jumped on the Virtual Foundry forum and I read that the copper is one of the most brittle and they've had some bad batches with it. So I said, well, let's go to the bronze. Maybe I'll have better luck with the bronze. So in unpackaging the bronze, it broke halfway through the reel. So I had to unreel the reel, and this is what I was left with, that I had to unreel it to the break, and in the process, it, it broke some more. So here's, I would say, almost half the roll that's not unusable, but off the roll. So once I got that figured out, I started trying to print with it. Again, the dragon egg. And again, we had issues. The filament would feed into the hot end and then break above it. Not, not inside where the extruder, uh, where the stepper motor is, but rather above the hot end uh, where it starts to feed in. And so I tried all different kind of configurations, putting the reel on the side, putting the reel above it. And finally, what I had to do is put the reel like literally right behind the hot end, right here. It's hanging down. I also had to print out a, a spool holder uh, with bearings for it. I think you can see it right there in the green with the green PLA. Um, which I needed anyway, so it's not a huge issue. But I literally have this spool hanging down right behind the hot end, and that has been my only success. So I was finally able to get a solid fill dragon egg. Now this was printed at uh, 2.25 layer height. I wanted something fast. I've been messing around with it for so long. I wanted something fast, and it did print out fairly nicely. Um, considering the layer height and everything. It's nice and heavy. This is a solid dragon egg because I wanted something that I could center with. And I assume that it has to be solid or fairly solid to be able to center it. So that's where I am at now. Um, very frustrating that it is as brittle as it is. Of course, I mean, it is 90% metal. So I'm going to go ahead and print some other stuff out, then we'll try centering something, but that's kind of the update where I'm at now. Very, I don't I honestly have much bronze left on this roll. Um, I have the extra that kind of fell off of it, uh, but that's kind of where we're at. So I'm going to try to print some more stuff, maybe with some copper too, uh, but my kind of take on this right now is this stuff is just so brittle. Uh, so we'll see if we can still make it work uh, from here. Now, in reading the instructions for the centering process, it became pretty clear that I was going to fail at this. And the reason is, is that the process requires very specific temperatures and times for the centering process. Now, despite this, I figured I was going to try the, the, you know, to go ahead and center this just to see what I came up with. So the process really is, is you mix up their magic black powder, much like plaster. 
you paint it on the object to keep the detail and then you suspend the model in the magic black powder in a metal container and I had a can of beans so that's what I was using. It's a lot like my casting process except I'm not pouring metal in, the metal's already inside. And I assume that what's happening is the metal melts to some degree inside and burns off all the PLA that's the metal suspended in, although where that PLA goes I'm not sure. But I thought I'd give it a try, and in the end it was a pretty messy process, although not much messier than when I do my plaster molds. I'm not sure what this black magic powder is, but it's definitely not plaster. It's something other than that, and it kind of smells like rotten eggs when you're done with it. Here's the results of the centering process, and as expected, it did not turn out correctly. Interesting though that the black magic powder, um, or magic black powder, um, turned white at least on the outside and had a lot of bubbles in it which probably had something to do with me but the dragon egg in the end just turned out to be like almost like charcoal it, it really it didn't even look like metal at that point it was just um, just like basically black powder and again I'm not blaming uh, virtual foundry for this this was obviously my issue I didn't follow the process correctly I don't have a kiln but I did want to give it a try and see what my results were just out of curiosity, really. So the, the dragon egg did come out. I broke it when I'm coming out. I wanted to see kind of what was the deal with it. And um, the outside was pretty much the same. The scales were all there. But the inside was just this dark kind of charcoal powder. So um, maybe I'll play around with it some more. But uh, in the end, I didn't expect very good results with this. So here's two more prints that I did with this filament. And let's just jump into it. What do I like about this filament? Well, it's very nice to be able to file away the layer lines. It goes very quickly. With a little bit of filing, five minutes a model, I was able to make it look like these things weren't even 3D printed. What I don't like about this filament is the brittleness. It just breaks all the time. I mean, I spent more time trying to get it to feed in my printer than I did printing models off, off of it. And that's super frustrating. So who would I recommend this to? Well, if you don't have a foundry, if you can't, you know, make your own, you know, metal cast, then this is probably your next best option. Um, but it is very expensive considering my printer was 160 bucks and this film it's 100. It's not really up my alley. So for me, it's not worth it. But I'm sure there's people out there with the money to spend and have a use for this type of object. One thing that's nice is that the objects do feel metal. They're heavy. But that said, I personally just don't see the value in it unless you have a very specific thing that you're printing and you want it to shine like metal. I mean they make metal paints, you could paint it metal. But I'm like I said, I'm sure there's people out there that will be, you know, into this type of filament. And it does work. I mean, it's not that it doesn't work. It does work. It's just very frustrating to get in feed. So that's kind of my review on it, guys. It's not for me, but I'm sure there's some people out there that's willing to spend the time to get it to feed and want that type of look. So that's it, guys. I'll leave the rest to you. Give me your opinion. What do you think about it? Leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.